Disease management is a principal interest for growers of all types of lettuce, as viral, bacterial, and most importantly, fungal diseases can seriously impact quality and yield. Hi, I'm Paul Brierly. At the Yuma Center of Excellence for Desert Agriculture, our focus is bringing together the ag industry, university researchers, and government agencies to find solutions to the pressing problems of desert agriculture. Today, we'll be talking about mitigating and managing gray mold of lettuce with U of A plant pathologist, Dr. Barry Pryor. The disease gray mold caused by the fungus Botrytis cinerea is generally considered a minor disease in field-grown lettuce. The fungus is very common and is found in virtually everywhere plants are grown. It is fast growing, survives well on decaying plant material, and often does not cause disease on healthy plants. However, under the right environmental conditions, it can be a serious plant pathogen and can attack a wide range of important vegetable and fruit crops. Today, we'll be focusing on gray mold on iceberg lettuce. The fungus first appears as very small areas of white growth on the lettuce plant surface, but very soon darken to a gray color as fungal spores form. These dusty colored spores are readily spread by the wind and are the principal method by which this fungus spreads from plant to plant. The spores can remain dormant on plant surfaces for long periods of time until conditions are favorable for spore germination and disease development. Botrytis also forms two additional types of reproductive structures on or in infected lettuce tissue and include dark brown or black multi-celled structures called sclerotia and single-celled thick-walled dark clematospores. The primary symptoms of the disease on lettuce plants include small necrotic spots on the upper leaf surfaces and plant wilting. Upon close examination, a fuzzy gray growth will be present at the base of the lettuce plant, often accompanied by the presence of sclerotia. With the exception of the necrotic spots on the upper leaf surfaces, these symptoms are similar to those of lettuce drop caused by the fungus sclerotinia, although the fuzzy growth of sclerotinia will be white. Infected plants that show these symptoms usually die within a short period of time. Botrytis scenario can survive on crop debris, as a pathogen on numerous crops and weed hosts, and as sclerotia in the soil. Airborne spores that land on senescent or damaged lettuce stems and leaves germinate and rapidly colonize this tissue. Once established, the pathogen grows into adjacent healthy stems and leaves. Botrytis scenario can survive on plant debris from numerous crops and on weeds, and so field sanitation is the first important step in disease management. Following harvest of any crop in fields in which lettuce will soon be grown, all crop residue should be disked as soon as possible and thoroughly incorporated into the soil. Avoid injuring lettuce plants in any way. Necrotic tissue following damage is a prime location for botrytis spores to germinate and once growing, the fungus can quickly invade healthy tissue. Keep plant surfaces dry as much as possible. Avoid overhead irrigation or irrigate when the plant surface will dry quickly afterwards. Avoid standing water in the field as this promotes infection of the lettuce plant at the soil surface. The most effective management tool for gray mold control is the application of fungicides when the conditions for gray mold outbreaks are high. And there are a number of products effective against botrytis. However, some botrytis populations have become resistant to certain fungicides when those products are used exclusively over long periods of time. Therefore, for effective resistance management, always rotate the use of products with different modes of action or mix such chemicals in a single spray tank if mixing is allowable as stated on the product labels. Research in the management of gray mold of lettuce continues and includes annual trials to assess efficacy of new crop protection products the evaluation of biological products that contribute to plant defense and can be used on organic crops, rapid and early detection of the disease before symptoms are visible to the naked eye, including using remote detection technologies, 
development of forecasting systems that let growers know when conditions are conducive to gray mold disease outbreaks. And although there are currently are few varieties with noted resistance, breeding efforts are ongoing to develop cultivars that show tolerance to botrytis infection. We are proud to partner with researchers like Dr. Barry Pryor and to be a part of ongoing research for gray mold. If you'd like detail about this research and more, be sure to visit our website at desertagsolutions.org. We look forward to finding needed answers for the industry together.